Edward Snowden, the United States hero and traitor, how deep should our right to know go? The controversy surrounding Edward Snowden's release of information pertaining to the national security of the United States is polarizing amongst the country's people to sum up the ongoing situation in one word. While the young man may have released documents he compiled from his work as a subcontractor with the National Security Agency, NSA, back in mid-2013, the effects of his actions are still being felt by multiple parties today. As various journalistic publications were the entities that allowed Snowden to release his copies of classified information, it stands to say that the journalism world has been thrown into the middle of the debate regarding freedom versus the sometimes juxtaposing societal needs of increased security and whether or not our nation's government has the people's best interests at heart. It is a function of the press to serve as a watchdog and be the fourth branch of the national government that oversees and blows the whistle when corruption seeps in or things get out of control. As such, Edward Snowden and the papers he partnered with have gone on record viewing themselves as players in the situation of unveiling potentially incriminating documents of the federal government. Snowden himself has been effectively exiled from the country, although he did choose to leave on his own terms before the fallout of the information leak. This split has caused a rift in the public opinion on Snowden. Between his enthusiastic supporters and those who side with our nation's government in this matter, there is the average citizen of the United States who may find it hard to come to a conclusion regarding the titular character in current American politics. His motives and his actions that have led to a debate on how the NSA should operate regarding national security and the freedom, liberty, and privacy of the average citizen. One must be equipped with the accurate information on exactly what was leaked before coming to a conclusion on Snowden's actions, and various documents of Snowden's leaked dossier will be detailed further along in this paper. We can weigh whether or not the American people's right to know about government proceedings supersedes the careful processes of security and spying on global citizens in foreign lands, and most controversially, domestically. A large point of Snowden's descent from the country and exile into Hong Kong and eventually Russia was because of the information that he discovered as an employee of the NSA. He explained his enlightenment regarding the processes the country uses to spy on American citizens as disturbing, and he eventually felt a moral obligation to take and make what he found public. Through his work, he discovered that the NSA was using telephone conversations and internet usage of all people to compile data that they said would help in the war against terrorism and provide a secure nation for the American people. Snowden's difference of opinion in that regard and growing personal and moral responsibility led to the leaking of documents, something his father says is untrue about his son. I know my son. I know he loves his country, said Lon Snowden. He described his son as a whistleblower instead of a leaker, according to a CNN report. Snowden effectively threw his entire American life away to fulfill his personal duty that he fell after learning what he did while employed at the NSA. He left his family and girlfriend behind and still resides in Russia to this day. Some are quick to assume that Snowden is a traitor by staying in Russia, but he lives there because his new home refuses to extradite him back to the United States for prosecution under the Espionage Act. Snowden even deleted all the copies of the NSA documents he had possession of after relinquishing them to news, out news outlets. According to some interviews, this confirms that Snowden did not give the U.S. information over to the Russian government. He has also gone on record as saying he still believes in what he did in the present day, at least two years after the information was published in The Guardian, Washington Times, and other papers. Now that certain facts are cleared up, it's time to go into the details of the security information Snowden released, so we can come to a conclusion as to whether the public knowledge of it will now help the American people live better and freer lives, or if the release of that top secret information will only jeopardize American security and the safety of the nation's people. One of the most prominent of Snowden's efforts was against the PRISM program of the NSA that collects current, real-time information of citizens of the United States through the Internet and other communicative means. PRISM is focused exclusively on domestic spying through the companies that power phone and Internet usage throughout the country. According to The Guardian, a newspaper based out of the United Kingdom, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court contacted Verizon and requested the company to release information about its American customers. The court requested that such details as telephone numbers and phone conversations and call duration of those calls from Verizon customers be divulged for the NSA's mass data collection. This request was made in April of 2013, and in June of 2013, that request was made public after Snowden's release of his information to The Guardian on June 5th of that year. While it is unknown whether or not any government-affiliated agencies are able to eavesdrop on the content of customers' conversations, it was affirmed here that bodies like PRISM and FISA can collect information regarding the details of such conversations. For example, they can know that you called your mom's number for exactly 30 minutes, or ordered a pizza from Domino's that took 30 seconds. To be fair, they do not know if you ordered a pizza for certain, 
but a lot can be said or deduced from certain telephone call lengths and other information. Provisions that protected acts like these from FISA, PRISM, and the NSA were safeguarded by the Patriot Act, which was instated and signed into law after the terrorist attacks of 9-11 on October 26, 2001 by President George W. Bush. Now nearly a decade and a half later, many provisions that used to be outlined by the Patriot Act have expired and were not signed back into law by federal legislature, making some lean towards Snowden's actions being the right ones before some of the American people and the government realized it. On May 31, 2015, the United States Senate decided to move forward with the USA Freedom Act and officially signed it into law on June 1, 2015. This law ended the collection of phone metadata of security agencies and ended certain provisions of the Patriot Act with a contrasting solution. Arguably the most controversial of the, of the provisions was Section 215 of the Patriot Act that allowed the NSA rights to collect the phone metadata of millions of Americans who were not suspected of any crime. Essentially, this is domestic spying, and although the NSA was allowed to continue any investigations it had already started, they were forced to stop all other data collection after the expiration of Patriot Act Section 215. Since a practice that the NSA was participating in that Snowden had deemed un-American is now no longer legal, some have changed their mind in the government and general populace regarding the now 32-year-old leaker. There are many petitions online asking for his pardon and return to the United States, and so far none of those citizen requests have been fulfilled. Does this mean what Snowden did was right, just ahead of its time? It is up to a personal choice where we all measure if we would prefer being spied on to increase our national security, something the FBI admits has not had much of a result as the NSA data collection was supposed to succeed in hopes of foiling both foreign and domestic terrorism plots. FBI agents can't point to any major terrorism cases they've cracked thanks to the key snooping powers in the Patriot Act, the Justice Department's Inspector General said in a report Thursday that could complicate efforts to keep key parts of the law operating. And indeed, less than two weeks after this article was published by the Washington Times, Congress decided to repeal the aforementioned provisions of the Patriot Act that gave the NSA and its partners the power to spy on American citizens. Approval of the NSA's early 21st century activities was low and fell even more. In fact, 2016 presidential candidates Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton, and even Republicans Ted Cruz and Rand Paul have based some of their platforms off of their criticism of the NSA bulk collection of metadata. It makes American citizens wonder if Edward Snowden was correct, maybe even righteous in what he did. He has explained his reasoning for what he did many times on the basis of morals and also logic. The problem with mass surveillance is when you collect everything, you understand nothing, said Snowden in a virtual speech to the students of Upper Canada College, according to a CBC report. Snowden has also gone on record saying that he would rather live with his voice heard than without a governing body providing him a state to live. He has also not described himself as a hero because he says everything he has done is also in his self-interest. He does not want to live where his communication with others can be eavesdropped on. Opponents of Snowden have often cited that there are no documented instances of the NSA abusing their power of bulk metadata collection, but as the American people, we do not have to assume the truth of those statements. Without our right to know and knowing about the NSA programs that were doing more than what the general public was led to believe, we cannot be properly informed on how to live our lives and form our opinions. This is one of the main functions of the press, and without a right to know, we cannot make the decisions that shape our lives every day. In that sense, and whether or not you believe in Snowden's motives or intentions, it is obvious that he has done us a service by letting the truth out. Some American politicians and citizens are not the only supporters of Snowden's movement for freedom and privacy. The documentary film Citizen Four, about Snowden's work and fallout, won the Academy Award for Best Documentary Feature. Director Laura Poitras and journalist Glenn Greenwald helped Snowden tell his story as he was revealing the information in Hong Kong. He described himself as a secret government employee and warned Poitras that every interaction she had online or via telephone would be known about and that her privacy would be encroached upon by the security systems of the United States. The European Union has also collectively decided not to extradite Snowden to the U.S. and elected to drop any criminal charges its member states had as well. With people from all sides of the world ready to defend Snowden's actions and current civil liberties, it is an unpopular time for the National Security Agency and the practices that were so popular after the tragedy of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. To answer the question posed at the beginning of this paper, yes, I believe that our right to know as an American public is important, and it deserves to go as deep as it needs to in order to equip us with the information necessary to make decisions regarding our country. We may want the NSA to spy on us for the greater good of national security, or we may not. Either way, though, we should be informed in order to make that decision in the first place. The previously ultra-secret work of the NSA was not allowing us to make that decision. Edward Snowden took it upon himself to give the American people that chance to decide, ousting the NSA and becoming a wanted man of the United States in the process. 
And yet, many of us do not even know what Edward Snowden did beyond the headlines here and there over the course of these past two and a half years. He has given multiple exclusive interviews to media outlets about why the American people should care about this situation. He sums it up with the help of John Oliver on Last Week Tonight with John Oliver quite well. The simplified explanation reads, Your holy domestic communication between you and your wife can go from New York to London and back and get caught up in the database, explains Snowden on the show in reference to a potential picture of John Oliver's penis. This was done after Oliver showed Snowden multiple testimonials where Americans did not know about the NSA security privacy situation or who Edward Snowden even was. In an effort in trying to put the domestic spying phenomenon into terms more people could understand and relate with, the pair illustrated how communication within the United States or usage of storage services with companies like Google and other email services can put any files or messages into the bulk NSA database with the help of companies like PRISM who are contracted by the government to assist with security and spying practices. PRISM and other entities like it are then partnered with companies like Facebook and Yahoo so they have access to messages sent, files stored, and so on. The content of such stored and copied files and messages is not always known by the NSA according to them, but details such as contact information, message duration, and file size are kept and recorded by the agency. Snowden responded to Oliver's question regarding if he called a penis enlargement center at 3 a.m. and if the NSA would know about it. They would have a record of your phone number calling that phone number, which is the penis enlargement center. They would say they don't know it's a penis enlargement center, but of course they could look it up. Oliver then showed Snowden a series of the same people who said they had not heard of him saying that they would want a program that kept the record of dick pics abolished. For those of us in the know then, it seems to be our responsibility to have the conversation of whether we want more emphasis placed on freedom or security. It is obviously a tough balancing act, and that is also why the issue is somewhat split along partisan lines. Something so divisive, with its implications on citizen privacy, domestic freedom, and national security definitely deserves to be the subject of a serious American conversation, where we decide for ourselves if we want to be subjects of NSA surveillance. Edward Snowden gave us this possibility for a national discussion and safeguarded our right to know by relinquishing the safety of these secretive practices and top secret documents. It is our responsibility now to decide what we want and where we will compromise with others who may want something different. I think our nation's right to know with the help of responsible journalists should go as deep as we deem necessary. Some of us have already said this and stood for our freedom of knowledge. What do you say?